Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And this is the third installment in Kits I'm Afraid to Start. And you're probably already looking at this one and saying, what on earth could be holding you back from this one? How difficult can it be? It's an MPC Cavalier for crying out loud. So at any rate, you might be wondering why the hell do you want to build that at all? It's a loser car. Well, everybody has a soft spot for their first car good or bad. And my first car was a 1985 Cavalier hatchback. And when I saw this kit sitting in a local hobby shop, and it was actually a used kit, which is something you don't usually find at a hobby shop, I was quite excited. I didn't think anybody had ever made a model of a Cavalier, let alone a hatchback, which is what mine was. Although mine did not have these silly fender flares and all the weird goodies and things all over it. But it was a hatchback. And as a matter of fact, when we look at the parts, um, we'll see that in fact, the car that MPC used was in fact the Cavalier Type 10, which is the type that I did have. And mine was even blue. So I would like to build this model as the car that I owned. So before we get into why I'm afraid to start this or reluctant to start this, let's just go into a little bit of the history of the Cavalier. The Cavalier was a member of what General Motors called their J-Body family. And basically you had the Chevrolet Cavalier, you had the Oldsmobile Forenza, you had the Buick Skyhawk, you had the Cadillac Cimarron, which is the most derided of the J-Car family. And then you had the Pontiac Sunbird. And some years it was called the Sunbird, and sometimes it was called the J-2000. So Pontiac never really could figure out what it wanted to call its version of this car. And this really was either, you can either call it the high point or the low point of General Motors uh, badge engineering cars in that basically by changing the nose clip and some of the interior parts it could be like I said it could be either a Pontiac a Buick an Oldsmobile a Chevrolet there really that much there really wasn't that much difference between the body panels this is a 1982 Cavalier and I'm going to flash up a picture of the 19, I believe in 1984, they redid the front end. They basically gave it a new clip. And I'm going to flash up a picture of that, uh, that front end right now. So as you can see, it's quite a bit different front end. Um, it had four headlights as opposed to two. And the interesting thing to note is Chevrolet alone had two different noses for their hatchbacks. All the other divisions, if they had the hatchback, because not every division had the hatchback, but the other divisions of General Motors, the nose stayed the same, whether it was the four-door sedan or the two-door sedan or the station wagon or the hatchback, they all had the nose stayed the same. Chevy, on the other hand, if it was the sedan or the wagon or the two-door, they actually had a flatter nose, but it still had the two headlights and the turn signals. The hatchback had a very pointed nose on it. Now, in 1984, when it was given a facelift, all of the body styles got the same nose on it, which in my opinion, was probably the best looking front end that Chevrolet had on the Cavalier. And then the version that came after that with the arrow headlights, I think that was the second best looking version. And I never really cared for this look, and I never really cared for the very last styling that was applied to the Cavalier. So, now that you've been staring at this box all this time, let's take a look inside, and we're going to discover why I'm reluctant to start this. And like I said, 
this was a, a used, or I shouldn't say used. This was a kit that somebody had bought already and had traded, or it ended up secondhand at the hobby shop somehow or other. And there's three problems with the kit. And the two, the first two are not that serious. They're things that I should be able to overcome fairly easily. And the first one is not NPC's fault at all. If we look at the windshield, at some point, somebody left one of the tires sitting on the windshield. And that's pretty bad. That's going to require a little bit more than putting a coat of future on there. This is going to require sanding and then polishing to get rid of that. But it doesn't seem to be that deep. So I think this is probably fixable. The next problem with this kit is the wheels. Or rather, there are no wheels in this kit. What happened is the previous owner of the kit had obviously used the wheels for something else or misplaced them or something. I don't know. So anyway, here are the tires. I've got no wheels. However, that's not a real deal breaker either because the wheels that came in the kit, you had these wheels here, which were pretty fancy high performance wheels. There's another shot of them right there. Or these wheels here, which I don't ever remember seeing on a Cavalier. They almost look a little bit more something that appeared on uh, a Forenza or possibly a Sunbird. Now I've seen pictures of this kit put together and almost all of the pictures, the wheels sit proud of the fenders. They're actually out too far. And I think that is due to these extra fender flares that you can put on, which there's no way in hell I'm going to be using those. But once again, I'm not too concerned about not having either one of these wheels because I want the basic bare bones Cavalier wheel. And it just so happens that this model here, which I believe is, this must have been the wheel I took off to make a mold of, I believe this is Ravel Monogram. So this is a snap tight Ravel Monogram kit that Logan built when he was about 12 years old. And the reason this wheel is a little loose is upon looking at these wheels, Let's get a good focus here. It looks very similar to the stock wheels that were on the Cavalier. Now, I know they're probably larger wheels than were on the Cavalier, but they still look a whole lot better. And if I can pop this wheel off, yes, I can pop this wheel off. I can get the wheel to fit the tires that come in the Cavalier kit. So, all that's required is for me to make a mold of the wheels from the Impala. Ta-da! That didn't take me long at all. Actually, I made the mold probably two years ago. I haven't tried it out yet, but I don't see that there's going to be a problem. So that's problem number two, pretty much solved. What's holding you back, Dan? Come on! This is what's holding me back. If I build the Cavalier, I want it to be just like mine. And as you can see, this has the 1982-83 nose, and it's the pointy nose. Totally wrong for a 1985 Cavalier. And I haven't really decided how I'm going to address this. Because if I flash up a close-up of this nose, you'll see how different it is. So, that's the problem. Is I have to recreate a new nose. 
Now, I could hack this one to pieces and try to create a new nose out of this one. I could, I suppose, for the headlights, and actually the headlights are probably going to be the easier part of the whole thing. All I really need is a kit of a 1980s car that had four headlights. And I'd be able to take that part, and once again, using some latex, I'd be able to make a mold of the headlights. And that would give me that part. As a matter of fact, if I was to pop the headlights out of the bonnet of that LTL 9000 that I used for making the wrecker, I could probably make a set of molds using those for the headlights. The most difficult part, I think, is going to be the grill, because this grill just has some horizontal lines. The grill on the 84, 85, 86 Cavaliers has a bunch of, is a rectangular framework, and that looks like it'd be a real bugger to recreate. Let's take a look at the rest of the kit. The body itself is actually quite nice and right here you can see, let's zoom in, it actually says Type 10 Cavalier. So this is the the type that I had, the Type 10. And I don't know what was supposed to be so special about it. The only difference is, is mine had the logo down there and I'm actually going to flash up a picture of a Cavalier. I believe it's an 85. It looks very much like mine other than the color. So mine was a metallic baby blue on the top and a dark metallic blue down below this line right here. But at any rate, this looks like the spitting image of the car I had. The underside, and as you can see, a lot of the parts are going to be separate, so this is certainly better than a lot of the MPC and AMT kits from the 70s and earlier. And actually, if we look here really close, MPC was a division of fun dimensions. Here is our bucket. Now, it doesn't have separate side panels, but in terms of molded-in side panels, these actually look pretty good. Very, very similar to what I remember in my Cavalier. And here is the rear clip. It's not identical to the one I had, but it's darn close. I could easily make that work. There's the hood, the McPherson struts. These are the rear springs. Not sure what that part is. Um, this is the... The radiator support. What else we got in here? Front seat. Spent a lot of time sitting in those front seats. Now a lot of these parts... Okay, these are those god-awful fender flares. Get rid of those. And it looks like we've got a roll cage. I'd like to know if anybody ever raced a Cavalier. And these are those side vents that go over the side windows. What else we got in here? Oh, we've got several different seats. My seats weren't that nice. These are obviously the optional seats. We do have some wheel backs, so not everything is missing. Pretty much it seems to be the chrome sprue that's missing. And well, my Cavalier didn't have a single spot of chrome on it, so no loss there. Maybe we're missing the engine. I don't know. Engine. It's part of the transaxle. Got some engine parts in there. Oh, here are the decals. Might be able to use some of those in some future project. My apologies, the engine is in here. Here are the two sides. And this looks like the top part of the engine. Here's the oil pan. And then we have the drive belts. I sure as hell didn't have that many belts on the front of mine. But, other than the missing wheels that I'm not upset about, looks like everything I need is here. You've got some spare parts that I'm probably never going to use. Oh, here's looks like our, our front firewall. Yep. So, 
There we go. That explains why I'm afraid to start this. I know of the three problems that I've got with the kit. Windshield, I can deal with it. The wheels, I've already got a solution in hand for that. The only thing... That was rude. <laughs> the only thing that I don't have a solution to is the front clip. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to tackle that. And at the, the back of my mind, I'm almost wondering... Maybe if the best way to deal with this is to de redesign this part on a computer and maybe 3D print it. Unfortunately, I don't have a 3D printer. Although there are places in town that will print parts from, or I shouldn't say parts, they will print projects from files. So I'm thinking maybe one of these days when I have lots of time... <laughs> Yeah, right. Maybe I'll download a program for designing things for 3D printing, and maybe I'll try my hand at designing a part. So, that is Kits I'm Afraid to Start, number three. Basically, what I want to do is I want to build my first car, and I've got the kit to do it. All I need to do is to figure out how to redo the front clip. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and keep on modeling.